Hello, my friends, teacher Stefan here with close reading. The Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is one of America's greatest landmarks. The giant statue shows a lady wearing a flowing robe. Sometimes the Statue of Liberty is called Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty's right arm is raised high above her head. Her right hand holds a torch. Before electricity was invented, torches were used for lighting the way when people walked outside at night. A torch had a small fire that made light. The torch on the Statue of Liberty is called the Torch of Freedom. Okay, so we are learning all about one of America's, New York's famous landmarks. It has been copied around the world. When people see a statue like this, they immediately think about American freedom. The Statue of Liberty was actually a birthday gift to the United States from France. This great present was given on the 100th birthday of the United States. Yes, because America is not as old as its sister countries in Europe. The Europeans were the ones that traveled to the West and started America. The Statue of Liberty sits on an island in the ocean close to New York City. And thousands of people ride on a ferry boat to visit the Statue of Liberty each year. They can climb to the top on stairs inside the statue itself or even take an elevator. I would take the stairs just to say that I walked up all those flights. What is the Statue of Liberty also called? Its other name, right here, Lady Liberty. That is called alliteration, the same letter at the beginning of both words, la la, Lady Liberty. What is a torch used for? Light, heat, or warmth? Remember, she holds a torch. The torch is used to light the way, to see where you are going. Where did the Statue of Liberty come from? From the sky, buried in the earth, or as a gift from France? Bienvenue. Where is the Statue of Liberty? Washington, DC, New York City, or Philadelphia. Statue of Liberty can be found, of course, in New York City on a small island. Where is Lady Liberty's torch held? Well, it is clasped in her right hand. Why do visitors to the Statue of Liberty come by ferry boat? Mm, I gave you a hint earlier. They come by ferry boat because the Statue of Liberty actually sits on an island in the ocean. Leprechauns. Harry is a leprechaun who lives nearby to other leprechauns in the country of Ireland. Leprechauns live alone in the woods. Leprechauns make shoes for fairies. And like fairies, Leprechauns don't really exist. They're not real, but they're a part of folklore. And folklore is real in the sense that we all know about it. We learn about it. We pass these stories on. So perhaps there is no leprechaun that you can touch in a magical forest, but they are real in the sense that we talk about them. We draw them. We think about them. We see them on television. But if you go looking for a leprechaun, I don't think that you'll be spending your time wisely. Now, the leprechaun in folklore wears bright green clothes. They always wear a green coat, a black belt, and a hat. They wear funny shoes, as you can see in the pictures. Old, old shoes, not modern looking sneakers. Leprechauns have red hair and a full red beard which is very common in Ireland. 
they are supposed to look like little men. For whatever reason, there are no girl leprechauns. Weird, right? Leprechauns like to make or cause mischief. Yes, they are mischievous. They are troublemakers. They like to play tricks on people. Like someone comes behind you and taps your right shoulder, but moves to your left. So you turn and see no one. Or someone takes your shoes and puts them in the freezer or ties the shoelaces together. Folklore says that leprechauns have a pot of gold. That's a big bowl full of gold. And if someone can catch a leprechaun, he will show the person where the pot of gold is hidden. Humans can never catch a leprechaun because a leprechaun will disappear as soon as a person looks away. Mm. This is some interesting part of the folklore. So it's not just that they look fun in their small green clothes, but they play tricks. They can disappear and they have pots of gold hidden, ready for you to find once you catch a leprechaun. The leprechaun story says that these strange little men hide their pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. What does that mean? Do you think anyone will ever find the leprechaun's pot of gold? Can you find a leprechaun? Can you find the end to a rainbow? Can you dig up its pot of gold? It's not for me to say, but let's answer some questions. Leprechauns and fairies are real creatures in Ireland. Yes, no, or maybe so. Creatures of Ireland, possibly, but real, that is not true. What color coat does a leprechaun wear? Well, do you remember the pictures? Leprechauns love to wear green. What kind of mischief do leprechauns make? Playing tricks on humans, playing tricks on fairies, or playing tricks on elves? Does the story mention elves? Who do they play tricks on? Ah, yes. They are like fairies in that they are from folklore, but the tricks they play are on humans. Our answer is A. Why will a human probably never catch a leprechaun? Can you answer this question? Well, look here. Leprechauns can disappear quickly is one answer. Leprechauns aren't real is another. Where do leprechauns hide their pot of gold? Leprechauns hide their pots of gold at the ends of rainbows. Now, if you are lucky enough to catch a leprechaun, what would you do and why? You would see what the leprechaun looks like. You would get their pot of gold. Would you ask the leprechaun, are you real? Why do you wear green? Why do you have so much money? Can you take me to see a fairy? Can you teach me how to do magic? Can I borrow your shoes? Those are just some of my ideas. Now you can think of some of your own. Practice time. Every day after school and on Saturdays too, Tanya is supposed to practice her piano lessons for an hour. Her piano teacher and her parents all tell her that she needs to practice in order to become good at playing the piano. Mm. Practice not only makes perfect, practice makes proficient, practice makes a habit, and you need a habit to get good at something. But Tanya doesn't much like playing scales over and over again. Ba -da 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 -da. Da, 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 da. Her feet dangle from the high piano bench. That's true with kids. Sometimes she spends time just kicking her feet back and forth instead of playing the piano. 
She daydreams about being at the playground with her friends or reading a good story. Yes, we get distracted easily, especially when we do something that we don't think we like to do. A voice from far away calls out to remind her she is supposed to practice until supper is ready. Tanya, piano. One evening, grandma comes to eat supper with the family. Grandma asks Tanya how the piano lessons are coming. Tanya replies, ah, I get tired of practicing. Grandma says, let's go shopping on Saturday. On Saturday, they go to the music store and look at all kinds of instruments. Hmm, so perhaps she loves music, but just not piano, or maybe not classical music. What instrument do you like best? Asks grandma. I think psh, drums are neat. Drums are part of the marching band, answers Tanya. And you can see pictures of the marching band here. Now Tanya loves to practice the drums every day. Sometimes mom calls out, Tanya, you've practiced enough for today. You can play outside until supper. Yes, you just have to find what you're passionate about and then work isn't work. For me, guitar replaced my piano and I still play it every day. Not because I have to, but because I want to. How long was Tanya asked to practice the piano? Ugh. For a whole hour, 60 minutes. Instead of practicing, sometimes Tanya would do what? Well, she would daydream, fantasize about playing with her friends. Who reminds Tanya she can stop practicing to play outside? Is it dad, mom, or grandma? Hmm, when does this happen in the story? Right at the very end. And it's the mom. Who took Tanya to the music store? Was that mom, grandma, or was it dad? Look, grandma says, let's go shopping on Saturday. Grandma asks, what instrument do you like best? It was good old granny. Why does Tanya like the drums? Look here, she thinks they're neat because she likes marching bands. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Do you like playing the piano? Why or why not? Again, maybe you like music, but don't like the songs you're playing. Or maybe you just don't think you have a good ear for music. Or maybe you think it's too difficult at first. But remember, nothing great is easy to do at first. That's why not everybody is great at everything. Dedicate yourself, discipline, and you will achieve greatness. To catch a thief. A long time ago and far away, a wise magician was traveling through a strange land. He was tired from traveling all day. He stopped at an inn to spend the night and rest. He was the last guest to arrive. Ooh, very ominous, right? It's a little unsettling. The last guest, it was at night, a traveler in a strange place, a magician. The innkeeper was very glad to see the magician. Oh, wise magician, the innkeeper said, my wife's ring has just been lost. Can you help us find it? Have you searched for the ring? Asked the magician. We have looked and looked everywhere, said the innkeeper. Maybe the lovely ring was stolen. Because jewelry is very valuable and it's very small and easy to steal. After the evening meal, the magician announced, I believe a ring was stolen tonight before I arrived. I carry with me magical sticks that determine the truth. Okay, so these sticks 
will unveil the mystery about the missing ring. Each stick is the same length, but by morning, a thief's stick will grow one inch. Interesting. So the sticks change length depending on if you've stolen. The magician gave each guest a magical wooden stick. In the morning, everyone gathered to prove that they were innocent. One by one, they filed by to compare their sticks with the magicians. They all matched the magician's stick except one. Somehow one stick was shorter. Interesting. I have found the thief, explained the magician. You see, the thief cut one inch off his stick because he believed it would grow during the night. Oh, that's brilliant. So perhaps we thought the spell didn't work or that there were three thieves. But in fact, the magician was just a very clever man and tricked the thief. The magician stopped at an inn he knew quite well. A, B, or C. It was a strange land. So our best guess is false that he did not know this land. What did the innkeeper want the magician to find? Well, his wife's ring was missing. What was the magician's magical sticks made from? Look here. It was made from wood and perhaps it wasn't magical at all. The magician gave magical sticks to guests, the innkeeper's family, or everyone. The magician gave each guest at the inn. So our answer is A. Whose magical stick grew? Careful. No one's. The magician gave out four sticks of the same length and they were all the same length the next day except one was shorter because the thief believed it would grow and they cut it, but no sticks actually grew. The innkeeper's family searched nowhere for the lost ring, A, B, or C. We have looked and looked everywhere. So did they search nowhere? False, they looked everywhere. The thief was tricked by the magician in this story, A, B, or C. Yes, you see the thief cut one inch off his stick because he believed it would grow. The thief was tricked. Creatures of the night. Have you ever thought about what happens outside at night while you are sleeping? Lots of other creatures are sleeping too. Maybe your dog or cat spends the night sleeping with you. Cute. If you live where there are deer, like Canada, maybe a buck or a doe, that's the male and the female, tiptoes beneath your window. In the morning, look for their tracks in the snow their hoof prints. The pretty little red fox may be out hunting for a meal and from the hen house, a chicken it may steal. <clears throat> the slow and clumsy opossum might pass by while nocturnal bats fly overhead in the sky. So look at the animals so far. We have the buck deer and the doe. We have the red fox and the opossum and the bat. The beavers are out during the night, cutting trees and branches to make their dam just right. And a porcupine may come to the stream to take a drink. There are more animals out than you might think. In fact, at night, many creatures wake up and come alive. And it is only because you flash a light that they disappear, but they are out there. 
morning comes and as you raise your head, the nocturnal animals are ready for bed. Yes, because when the sun comes up, they go to sleep. A buck and doe are foxes, deer, or raccoons. They are members of the deer family, just like reindeer. A fox will eat plants, grain, or birds. According to the passage, birds, because from the hen house, a chicken it may steal. An opossum moves slowly, quickly, or very fast. Well, the slow and clumsy opossum. <laughs> yeah, according to the passage, slowly. Which animal dams up streams? That means uses wood to slow the water and make a house. The porcupine, the beaver, or the raccoon? Well, raccoons have little hands, but no, it is the beavers that live in the rivers and lakes and dam up streams made from trees. Which animal can fly? A bat, a deer, or a beaver? It is the bat, of course. They have wings like Dracula. Can you name more nocturnal animals? Hmm. What other animals only come out at night? Can you think of any more? Well, take a flashlight and go look around. About insects. Insects are everywhere and they live in all kinds of places. Ants are some insects that live under the ground. Grasshoppers live above the ground in fields. Some kinds of beetles live on or near water, but other kinds of beetles live in tree bark. <clears throat> Bees build a hive where they live. Some insects like cockroaches are pests that live in homes and apartments. You've probably seen many different species of these bugs or insects in your life, around your home outside, in parks, maybe outside your school. All insects have six legs. Spiders are not insects. One reason is because they have eight legs. Humans are also not insects. We have three, two legs. Now the body of every insect has three parts. The first part is the insect's head. Like the head of other creatures, an insect's head is the location of its eyes and mouth. An insect's mouth is specially designed for the kind of food it eats. Instead of ears, insects have two antennae that stick out in front. Do you wish that you had two antennae? The middle part of an insect is called the thorax. <clears throat> Wings and legs are part of the thorax. The back end of an insect is called the abdomen. An insect's stomach is in the abdomen. So is the anatomy of an insect like a human? Yes and no, but not really. Which insect lives under the ground? Butterfly, grasshopper, or ant? Hmm, which ones do you see in the air, on the ground, and which ones do you see digging? Yes, it is the ant that spends most of its time underground, in tunnels. Which insect builds a hive? Ant, bee, or grasshopper? A hive with honey, that is a bzz bee. How many legs does an insect have? Four, six, or eight. An insect has one, two, three, four, five, six legs. 
Where are an insect's eyes? The head, the thorax, or the abdomen? The insect's eyes are on the head. Where is an insect's stomach? Head, thorax, or abdomen? Well, the stomach is in the abdomen. So that's C. Now look at the picture. Is the butterfly an insect? Why or why not? Hmm, study, study. Yes, because we can see she has six legs. Look closely. You can see one, two, three, four, and then five, six at the front. Insect. <laughs> A day with Grizz. Grizz must be a grizzly bear. Beautiful, but powerful and terrifying. Grizz, the grizzly bear, lumbers through the forest. But he walks quietly on the pads of his large feet. He weighs so much that he easily squashes small plants when he steps on them. It is a lovely day with a light breeze and fair weather. Grizz walks over to the pool of water for a little drink before he hunts for berries nearby. A school of minnows swims in the shallow water of the pool. Beautiful setting. Grizz loves to eat wild blueberries and black raspberries when they are ripe. He jams as many berries into his mouth at one time as he can. The berries provide Grizz with a tasty meal. With a tummy full of berries, Grizz decides to rest for a while. He curls up and places the tip of his nose in one paw. A short time later, the nose of nearby blue jays <laughs> awakens Grizz. They are a very beautiful bird found in Canada. The calls of blue jays often signal danger. Oh, so Grizz decides to move further into the forest for safety. So look at the balance of nature and how the animals respond and talk and learn from each other. Grizz wanders through the woods until he is tired and goes to bed for the night. And that's the story of Grizz. What kind of animal is Grizz? Look here, Grizz is a grizzly bear. What happened to plants when Grizz stepped on them? Well, they were squashed. Where did Grizz get his drink? at the pool. What kind of berries did Grizz eat? Strawberries, black raspberries, or cranberries? Hmm, they were black raspberries. Interesting. What kind of birds woke Grizz up from his nap? Blue jays, crows, or seagulls? It was the noise of a nearby blue jay. How many types of bears do you know? Let's think. The polar bear, the grizzly bear, the black bear, the brown bear, the koala bear, the panda bear. And I'm sure there's more. Finding a meal. Every animal on earth must eat something in order to stay alive. Many animals eat some parts of plants. Giraffes munch leaves from the tall trees on the African plain. Koala bears in Australia only eat eucalyptus leaves in the forest. Even the mighty buffalo in America only eat grass. Some animals are predators, which means they eat some other creature. 
Lots of predators will catch and eat small animals like mice and rabbits. Larger fish eat smaller fish. Big predators in Africa like lions and leopards will attack all kinds of big animals, even elephants. Animals that predators eat are called prey. Mm. So now we are learning about more of the balance of nature and that some animal animals eat plants, but some animal animals have to eat other animals. That's just the way nature is. It can be cruel. It has predators and prey. Sort of sad. With predators all around them, animals need some way to protect themselves. One form of protection is camouflage. This means that the animal's outside appearance allows it to blend into its surroundings, so it is harder for a predator to find it. Look at the camouflage of these animals. You can see the moth or butterfly on the bark. Camouflage also works for predators. Look at the jaguar in the tree. Of course, the green chameleon on a green leaf, the brown toad on the brown rock, and the brown owl inside the brown tree hollow. Some predators use camouflage too. Predators need camouflage so that prey animals cannot see the predator nearby and they can get closer and closer until yummy, yummy. Both animals and humans eat to live. True, false, or the story doesn't say. Well, this is true. Everything that's alive and mobile needs to eat. Even plants need rain and sunshine and soil. Buffaloes eat some parts of plants like roots. True, false, or the story doesn't say. A buffalo, buffalo, buffalo. Even the mighty buffalo in America only eat grass. Hmm. Many animals eat some parts of plants. So this is false because even though the buffalo doesn't eat meat, the story does not say that it eats roots. So we have to be careful. That is false. What does the word munch, munch, munch mean? Catch, eat, drink, or pick. Giraffes munch leaves. And we're talking about animals eating. So that is our most logical answer here. What is an animal that catches and eats another animal called? Well, some animals are called predators, which means they eat some other creatures. So that's a predator. Camouflage is often used by preys as a way to disguise themselves from predators. Or is it the other way around? Is this sentence true, false, or the story does not say? Well, camouflage is a form of protection for both preys and predators, so that's true. Predators often use camouflage to capture preys. I think you know this answer now. It is also true. It works both ways. If the prey can't be seen, the predator can't eat it. If the predator can't be seen, the prey can't run away from it. Do humans have camouflage? Where? Well, our bodies are not that great of a camouflage. However, we have invented camouflage, right? We have clothing that can hide us in the desert, in a forest, in a jungle. We can wear black at night. We can wear white in the snow. Human beings on our own cannot compete against the animals, but our brain and intelligence allows us to create things that makes us smarter, faster, and definitely more unseen than any animal's camouflage. 
shapes on the road. Every driver of a car, truck, bus, or other kind of vehicle must obey, okay, must respect the traffic signs that are placed along roads and highways. These signs tell drivers what the law is on the road where they are. Traffic signs are very important and help to prevent accidents. Traffic signs have many shapes. The red stop sign at many intersections, okay, where one road meets another, is always an octagon. Octa meaning eight. It has eight sides. A yellow triangular sign pointing to the right means no passing zone. This means that the driver must stay on the right side of the road instead of passing around the other car. A red and white triangle pointing down says yield. Yield means let another vehicle go first. Be polite. Help the flow of traffic by allowing people to merge into the same lane. Here's an example of some of these signs. The sign to mark a school zone is a pentagon. That's five, five sides. And a railroad crossing sign is a circle with an X in it. There are other circular road signs too. Here you can see some. Do you remember any of these? Diamond shaped signs give drivers warning messages. Warning messages talk about dangers ahead on the road. Many other road and traffic signs are rectangles. Speed limit signs are rectangles and tell drivers how fast they are allowed to drive. So these are all the different shapes of the signs on our roads. How many sides does a pentagon have? Sign or no? Penta means five. What color is a yield sign? Use the passage. It is red and white. Diamond shaped road signs tell drivers what? Well, they give the driver a warning. Write the shape of each road sign here below. A is a triangle on its side. E is a rectangle, four sides. C is a pentagon, five sides. D is a diamond. That is like a rectangle on its side. E is an octagon, eight sides. And F is a circle, no sides. Percussion instruments. People and cultures all around the world have been making music using all kinds of musical instruments. Percussion instruments are played by some kind of hitting, striking, or rattling. Drums are one kind of percussion instrument. Drum players in many cultures beat on drums with just their hands. A conga drum is one kind of drum played with the hands. But of course, there are other kinds of drums that are played using a drumstick or a type of drumstick. The giant timpani drum, as you can see in the photo, sits on a stand and adds a deep rumbling, almost a dark sound to an orchestra. Some drum sets come with cymbals. Cymbals are two metal discs that clang together. The triangle adds a tiny sound, ding, ding. The triangle is a metal instrument that is struck with a little hammer called a beater. Some percussion instruments like maracas or a tambourine are rattled and make sound when they are shaken. A piano is a percussion instrument because players strike the keys with their fingers. Did you know? The keys cause hammers inside the piano to strike the metal strings inside that make the sounds. 
So it's kind of like a string and a percussion instrument. But this passage is all about percussion, instruments that must be struck. We have hand drums like the timpani. We have drum sets like in rock bands that use drumsticks. We have cymbals. We have drum drums. We have triangles. Ding, ding, ding. Tambourines. Maracas. And all these different drums that you can see below. African drums and Brazilian breading bows. So many types of drums exist. They are not all the same. How are percussion instruments played? Well, they are played by some kind of hitting, striking, or rattling. What is one kind of drum that is played by hand? Well, that is a conga drum. What kind of drum is played with an orchestra? Oh, that is the giant timpani drum. How many cymbals are played together? It is two that strike each other. What are the strings inside a piano made from? Oh, they are made from metal, which is why the piano is so loud. Can you give some reasons why everyone should learn to play a musical instrument? It's good for the mind and it's good for the soul. It calms you down. It connects you with our ancestors. Music has been an international language as long as humans have been alive. We might not all speak the same languages, but we can hear the same melody and feel the same emotions. Also, musical instruments are challenging, and there is no best musician at anything. You can always improve until your last day. So choose an instrument that you like and start playing. 